Hi, Caroline Carney here at Palais Arts, and I'm with the wonderful Nathan Rutkowski in front of his piece, which will be at our It Is Written show from now through October 29th with a special preview during the Collingswood Fine Arts and Crafts Festival on August 19th and 20th. Nate, can you introduce us to your piece? Sure. Uh, the, the title is 5-5, uh, five, five, uh, usually dated, so um, wait, they're called compositions, and I usually go with the date that they're finished. Uh, and this was composition 5-5-2023, five, uh, five, uh, Jersey Shore scene. Um, so the, the drawings all came from uh, beach sketches that, uh, that I had done um, and kind of created a composition where I uh, transposed all of them into one piece. And uh, this, this piece kind of developed over a long time. Um, I'm, most of what my work uh, involves with... Uh, an automatist or um, kind of like a doodle sketching process. It, it's a surrealist technique. Um, so these are, like I said, these originally started from uh, Jersey Shore sketches that I photocopied and pasted onto this phone core mm -hmm. and then uh, layered media and then the text uh, on top. Um, it was a long process for this. Uh, never quite knew when it would be finished. Um, the text that I wrote in here has to do with um, bringing all the arts together as one form of expression. Um, a lot of things, you know, a lot of things that I do other than painting are video works where, you know, I incorporate music with, with images kind of superimposed on one another. Mm -hmm. And um, I was thinking about that as I was doing this. And, um, and then, like I said, you know, this had had been sitting for a long time and, and I brought my uh, abstract style on top of this as another layer. So a big part of what I do is layering. And this is kind of what that was about, was the layering aspect. Well, we've talked quite a bit uh, with you in your previous videos about um, how this body of work has kind of grown like with the automatism. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things in the earlier works is it was very tight in terms of line and yeah. in terms of layering line to bring out um, scenes and like uh, figurative uh, things within the scenes. And then right. you're working with bursts of color and yeah. using very visceral things like, like fingerprints and mm -hmm. um, textures like corrugated yes. cardboard and things like that. Right. This is interesting uh, with the washes and it somewhat uh, reminds me of your piece Storm Over mm -hmm. Jersey because you're using a lot of beautiful color washes to give almost, or Ionian C, which we're taking to 14C, where you're creating almost a landscape feel yeah. with the washes of color and then moving these other automatistic elements through it. Um, I think that that's, I always love that about your work, uh, that you're, to see how it grows. I love how the blue in here, you've um, mirrored with the blue that you're surrounding by, and it goes really well into where you trace the lines over the figures. Right. Um, and I believe that we do have a picture of the earlier stages of this yeah. that you did that will pair with this so that that way people can kind of see how you go through the journey. Can you talk about how you've developed, like as you've moved through this body of work and what drew you to that? Um, what drew me to the body of work was, um, so I had teachers uh, from school who uh, kind of worked in that style, um, the surrealist style where they're, you know, they just kind of uh, let the marks kind of create the image and you know, they always inspired me. And then um, I looked to, uh, Sai Tuan Lee and, oh, uh, and yeah, Andre Masson yeah. and um, Arshil Gorky and Willem de Kooning, you know, all these artists that uh, let their intuition and kind of let their, you know, let chance kind of create the image. And um, so I kind of worked from that tradition and try to bring my own feel to it, my own spirit. One of the things that's interesting is, is that you add figurative elements, yeah. which I think that like you probably have a little bit of a figurative yeah. bias, yes. uh, which I think is an interesting addition because not all, but yeah. a lot of people you just mentioned tend to be more abstract. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that's, um, I, I, I go away from it and then I come back to it and I've been, and I like the fact that I, I go back and forth. That's why so I love torch just, songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, I just, just can't quit it. You know? Yeah, I mean, like, so, it's my bread and butter. <laughs> like, 
So, you know, it's a, it, it's something that'll always be a part of me. And I just um, try to use the material to, to suggest things that I wouldn't necessarily think intentional. Yeah. And I love how um, it's true of IODNC as well. You're incorporating work that you've done as either studies or earlier yeah. works. And then you're thinking about how they can grow with you yeah. and incorporating that in it. This right. also has your work always like is either monochromatic yeah. or very striking in color. Yeah. Um, I think this is interesting because you're both using um, analogous color and also opposites, like yeah. using complementary. Yeah. Did you think about that actively? Yes. yes, I do think about that. I'm always thinking about um, co color contrast, you know, split complements, all you know, uh, all kinds of contrasts. I'm, I'm thinking about um, you know how uh, opaque, translucent, transparent paint, and how how those playing those against one another um, adds depth and uh, dimension and just gets, you know, uh, strengthens the image. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I don't know what makes me feel like it's right, but when I know it's right, it's right. And or I, feel I like think that I, that's like true of a lot of sure. artists, except for my mom, who she knows it's right. And then she's like, let me add, they're never right. <laughs> let me add 15 more things. And then somehow she's right with that as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I think that that's a, what makes someone kind of an artist is like knowing when to say when and be like, yeah. yes. This sometimes is you just got to say, you know, this is a complete statement. And sometimes it can take forever and sometimes, sometimes it happens. You're absolutely right. Immediately. That's right. Um, what I think is funny about this is the way that you use the lines to move forward, like mm -hmm. through, obviously like this, we see the figures in here and right. they, some are, um, there's three figures and some are more apparent than others. Right. Um, you've also used, uh, the orange is nice because mm -hmm. it is reminiscent of the sun. Yeah. And then these are reminiscent of the waves. Right. But also with the additional dimension of the writing, I do feel like it feels like the way that we think of stories when they mm -hmm. first happen, they're very clear. Yeah. And as, and you remember dialogue and all of these things and, you tell the story in a certain way, and then over time, the visual image for a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but becomes more, uh, you start to remember in fragments mm -hmm. of vision. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I've said this in some of the other videos too, is that one of the things we wanted to do in the show is show all the different ways that our culture, our society, um, our impulse to be humans is, to, as humans, because uh, we're already humans, uh, our impulse as humans is, to tell stories, to have a record, um, mm, yeah. and it manifests in this collective thing we have called language. Right. Um, and so it is written as kind of a grand way of sure. saying that. Um, how do you think about story in your in your work? So that, that so another way, you know, yes, story and also like narrative. Yes. People talk about narrative a yeah. lot, and that's what uh, we're looking at too. And um, so the story is, you know, the time that I complete the thing is like, is a record of, you know, is like a diary yeah. situation. So Which is why it's so doing, neat that you title it by yeah, date. Yeah, so it's 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 everything that has happened at that time and uh, all, you know, society, current events, all those things filter into what I do. And it's, the story is also the story of the making. Yeah. So the story of the of it coming together is, is, is um, also a narrative that I play with. Um, and, you know, the Jersey Shore has so many memories for me and, you know, growing up, I that's where we always went. It's and, probably the best part of being from Jersey. And I, and I, have, uh, I have played with that motif mm -hmm. in multiple pieces. Yeah. Um, many, many pieces have, have, have included that, um, that feeling and that sense of place. And um, it's all woven into the making yeah. of, of, the, of the pieces, that, you know, that narrative, that activity. Well, this is a gorgeous piece. Thank you very much. Um, I love the colors and the line. It has such, um, there's also a little bit of mystery mm -hmm. with it that I think is nice yeah. and then surprising, like little surprises yeah, are nice yeah. in it. Um, so we hope you'll all come see Nate's work at Palin Arts from now through October 20th. Thank you so much, Nate. Thank you. Appreciate it.